So process-based CBT, or uh, as we now often call it process-based therapy or PBT, um, is not really a new form of treatment, uh, but rather it is a new approach of how to systematically combine what we know works for a given client in a way that maximizes uh, treatment um, uh, benefits. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it arose, so it's in close collaboration with my good friend and colleague, Stephen Hayes, and it arose from a discussion we had initially at Philly, uh, uh, well, we were, we were enemies and controversy, uh, we had a lot of controversies, and, uh, and we, we found common ground, and uh, we both were dissatisfied with the field of psychotherapy as it was, and um, and uh, I think an important uh, limiting factor was our, was the so, was the over focus on uh, on syndromes, on psychiatric disorders, on the idea that there are, that there's a latent disease behind depression, latent disease behind panic disorder, a latent disease behind generalized anxiety disorder. That somehow you can't measure it directly, you can't access directly. You infer that based on symptoms that people report, and so as a result, people developed. Um, uh, obviously, the idea was to to develop drugs for all of these different disorders, and psychologists wisely developed uh, protocols treatment protocols, CBT protocols that focused on these particular syndromes. The problem now is that uh, we hit a, a, in a way, a limit in terms of how much further we can improve people's um, health. Uh, and, uh, and there are hundreds of different treatment protocols. It is completely untenable. We can't possibly train all of our clinicians in, in these massive amounts of protocols. Uh, so these, the, the idea that uh, um, psychiatric classification, the DSM, the ICD, um, uh, it somehow eventually will, will lead us to, to this critical thing that we need to treat is not going to happen. Uh, and, uh, and it also doesn't tell us anything about ideology, about maintenance, why people continue to have these problems that they have, and most importantly, it doesn't tell us anything about treatment. Obviously, when clinicians treat people with depression, with anxiety, with substance use, they don't really treat the diagnosis, the diagnostic, uh, the diagnostic the, the whatever diagnosis they came with, but they treat the individual, they treat the person. They're trying to understand what it is that contributed to the problem, uh, how to, how, why the problem's maintained, and how to treat them adequately. Now, good clinicians, will target on very similar issues, but there's no systematic way of going about that. It is left up to clinicians to somehow develop a, 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 a problem analysis, a functional analysis of the individual, but this is very limited. We don't have the, we, we, we are far away from having a systematic approach to do that. And then in the next step to target these problems systematically using uh, what we know works. This is what PBT is. It is a radical departure away from the syndrome-focused uh, idea of, um, of the DSM of the ICD. And we move toward understanding and targeting these biopsychosocial processes in the individual, in the person sitting in front of us. So we're moving away from a nomothetic, what works for most or, 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 or many people, to an ideographic, what works for this particular individual. We need to understand this person sitting in front of us. Uh, we um, uh, use an, a network approach to understand functional connectivity between pro uh, problems of the client. We use an ideographic approach to move solely to the individual. And when then we use these change processes uh, we are we were trying to understand these change process by applying what we call an extended evolutionary meta model. I will uh, say a little bit more about that probably uh, in uh, uh, when we when I describe it in a bit more detail. But the in essence, process based therapy is a functional analytic approach that um, generates a uh, for us, for a given individual. Uh, a maladaptive network to understand why this individual has this problem and, uh, and then attempts to uh, uh, identify entry, entry 
points in order to move this maladaptive network into an adaptive network by uh, disturbing these maladaptive processes that maintain uh, the problem and by enhancing adaptive processes, uh, focusing on resiliency and other factors that um, enable uh, the clinicians to perturbate, to disturb the system, and then to change it into an adaptive network. We start with a client's problem, uh, a client's ideographic problem, and not with a diagnostic category. We build a case using a, a network approach, a dynamic network approach, to develop the functional or to understand the functional relationship between sub-problems that the person has. In order to do that, we developed a framework. We call it uh, uh, the extended evolutionary meta model um, that. Um, that we understand that, that any, any um, and it's a theory uh, transcending idea, by the way. So any, any psychotherapy intervention that is effective will, um, will target these core overarching processes that I will about to discuss. Um, uh, let's start with something when it's maladaptive, uh, and then let's discuss it when it's adaptive. Maladaptation, happens if there is there are problems in variation selection and retention uh, applying it to a wrong context in reverse adaptation is healthy variation selection and retention in the in a given context what does it mean um, let's say let's use a behavior as an example um, if you do one thing over and over again it and you get whatever desirable outcome you want it's adaptive you want to keep doing that. You want to hold on to it. Now things change. The context changes. You change. And the same behavior does not produce the same outcome anymore. Now it's time to, to choose another behavior, to, to show variation. Healthy variation is the key uh, that starts the evolutionary uh, uh, process uh, from moving toward adapt adaptation. Now you might show healthy variation but um, uh, but you may uh, uh, choose, you may select whatever uh, uh, behavior, or also it could be thoughts, it could be approaches towards things, could be made to motivational strategies. Um, it doesn't have to be only behavior. But you, uh, as an example, I just use behavior. You might choose a particular behavior that is not adaptive. You might select the the maladaptive behavior, and that also leads to maladaptation, even though you have shown healthy variation. Now it's also possible that you've shown healthy variation and healthy selection, but you do not retain whatever seemed to have worked. And that also will lead to maladaptation. Adaptation requires all three. It requires variation because things will change. It will require selection of whatever is adaptive and it will require holding on to whatever seems to have had the desirable outcome. Healthy variation, selection and retention is a key toward adaptation. Now it also, needs to you need to uh, use these principles in the right context in one context it might be actually quite beneficial in another contract context it's completely uh, non-beneficial to uh, then you need to uh, choose a different behavior or approach or uh, uh, or, or strategy toward toward anything now uh, uh, these are the core overarching processes that we believe are key uh, toward uh, moving uh, psychopathology from psychopathology pro to prosperity for people moving toward their desirable goals and values. Um, uh, it, I, as I also mentioned, we don't have to limit ourselves to only behavior, but actually anything uh, uh, that is the, that are part of the human uh, experience falls under these cat uh, falls under these principles. There's also true for affect, not just behavior. That is true for cognitions. The way you you look at something, the, um, you may show uh, promise and variation. You have that maladaptation. You may choose, you may select the wrong perspective, and you have maladaptation, etc. This is also true for uh, attention, self-related processes, motivational processes, social, cultural, and also psychobiological issues. Um, uh, so we are we are building a, a uh, an overarching framework 
that would account for any effective psychotherapy approach. Um, it does not have to be CBT. Obviously, CBT uh, prominently uh, focuses on, on uh, variation selection, also retention, but other theoretical orientations, certainly if they're effective, to some extent will also target these things. Uh, again, behavior, affect, cognition, attention, self, motivation, social, cultural, bio, psychobiological processes, all of these need to have some uh, uh, need to show variation, selection, retention in the right context to be adapted. Uh, EAM provides such a broad framework for us to understand and to develop an ideographic network for a given client. Uh, so, you know, you might, you might uh, uh, have a client who, uh, who has um, problems with, um, uh, with showing variation in, uh, uh, in, a, in a given behavior, in a given context, and therefore uh, keeps smoking or keeps drinking uh, uh, in, in, uh, uh, because he is, the person is unable to, to choose other behaviors uh, to, uh, instead of drinking uh, or smoking and, and not retaining these healthy behaviors. And perhaps there are social processes that are in place that perhaps reinforce these behaviors. Perhaps there are psychobiological processes also present that uh, maybe, maybe there was a, a, a very negative experience in the past. Perhaps he, uh, the person learned it from the father or mother that these are uh, uh, ways to regulate one's own emotions using substances. All of these things we combine in one single network for a given client. Uh, the goal is here to identify the main problem areas, to identify these connectivities, and then to moving uh, a maladaptive network into an adaptive network by, by disturbing maladaptive processes and by strengthening adaptive processes. Uh, in order to uh, really see how to apply it, you will need to come to the workshop uh, and uh, or attend the workshop. It is impossible to put that in a few minutes uh, uh, as a summary. But we start with um, uh, uh, a treatment planning. Uh, in a way, developing the network is uh, already a therapeutic process. Uh, we involve the client directly in this development. In fact. Um, um, clients very quickly grasp the idea how things are connected uh, in their in their own in their own problem space. Uh, we uh, uh, client uh, therapists are um, encouraged to understand the client's reality from the client's perspective, um, incorporating cultural social background uh, into this development. Then we develop this uh, network with a client. Often the client draws this network together with a, with a, with a patient and then I, uh, identifies um, perhaps um, uh, single, single connections that, uh, that might be particularly important. Or perhaps there are, there are circuitries, perhaps there are positive feedback loops that often identify a process. Perhaps the social uh, context of, uh, of a person with substance use disorder um, is, is a primary factor that, that, that maintains the issue. So there are uh, these, these um, um, uh, sub-networks within a network that we identify in order to, uh, to, um, to plan the treatment, in order to find the, the easiest entry point. There's no single um, solution to this problem, but there are multiple possible solutions to uh, disturb the network. The trick is obviously to uh, perturbate the system in such a way that uh, it is most effectively perturbated, so you don't um, target an, uh, an issue that is not central to the person's problem, um, wasting time and, and le leading the person to frustration, and also to build in processes to in a way rescue the person because there are reasons why people do what they do. Even if they do maladaptive things, there are reasons why they do that. There might be maladaptive emotion regulation strategies that, that the therapist then needs to um, uh, replace with adaptive emotion regulation strategies, as an example. Um, 
we uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, developing this this network uh, incorporates uh, issues very broad, not at all focused on on only one particular orientation. They just certainly we would encourage clinicians to uh, to explore developmental experience, trauma history, attachment styles, other vulnerabilities, um, anything that that might be uh, responsible for the maintenance of these problems, and then uh, to identify reinforcers that uh, that 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 would that, that makes this system so resilient to change. Uh, so we we in in at any point these these networks as we develop them and as we go about in treatment, these are dynamic changes. There's it is not that this network is set in place at the that the first session and then will re remain as it is, but rather it is an evolving process, and um, uh, and the client will will uh, will redefine uh, her his own goals and values throughout treatment. Um, we we try to understand where the suffering is coming from, where, what are the personal strengths, and then again, as I said, moving from psychopathology to uh, prosperity to toward toward meaning and and finding finding a re, a, 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 a a purpose in in life that that fits the the client's um, uh, ideas and, and goals in life.